It was a typical evening, nothing out of the ordinary. I never imagined how drastically my life was about to change. David, my stepson, arrived home with his close friend Emika. I had seen Emika a few times before, but we had never really spoken. Emika wasn't like David. While David was loud and expressive, Emika had a calm, quiet demeanor that made you notice him. He moved around thoughtfully, as if lost in deep contemplation. His tall frame made him appear even more serious, and though he didn't say much, his presence was striking. I found myself curious about what David saw in him, and why they were so close. That night, as they disappeared into David's room, I assumed it would be just like any other night. I had no idea what was coming. Exhausted, I went to bed, expecting nothing more than a peaceful night of sleep. The house was silent as I lay half asleep in bed. My mind was drifting into unconsciousness when a soft knock on my bedroom door startled me. It was so quiet I almost thought I imagined it. I stayed still, assuming it was nothing. But then the door slowly creaked open, making me sit up in bed. I turned my head to find Emika standing in the doorway, illuminated by the dim light from the hallway behind him. His face was calm, but something about his presence unsettled me. He didn't smile or say anything, just stood there watching me. The air in the room seemed to shift, becoming colder, as if something had changed. My heart began to race, though I didn't know why. What was he doing there so late at night? Confusion swirled in my mind, and I wondered if something had happened. Is everything okay? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper, still unsure why Emika was standing in my room. He stepped forward, his expression unchanged. I couldn't sleep, he said in a calm voice that didn't match the strange tension in the air. I thought maybe you couldn't either. His words made no sense. I blinked in confusion wondering why he wasn't in David's room and why he had come to mine instead. My instincts screamed that something was off, but for some reason I didn't tell him to leave. The silence between us was suffocating, as if the room had shrunk. I cleared my throat and tried to sound firm. You should go back to bed, Emika. He didn't budge, though. I thought we could talk, he said softly. I glanced at the clock. Well past midnight, his calmness unsettled me further. Why now? Why me? Emika continued to stand there, watching me closely, as if waiting for something. I glanced at the unlocked door and felt a wave of anxiety wash over me. Why hadn't I locked it? I always locked my door, but tonight I hadn't, and now I regretted it. The air in the room felt thick with unease, and my instincts were telling me that something was very wrong. It's too late to talk, Emika, I said, trying to hide the nervousness in my voice. We can talk tomorrow. You should go. But he didn't move. Instead, he took a step closer into the room, and I felt a chill run down my spine. My heart was racing, and I didn't know what to do. Why was he standing there, and why didn't he leave? The silence was overwhelming, and the tension in the air was suffocating. Before I could think of what to do next, the door opened wider and David appeared in the doorway. Relief washed over me for a brief moment, but then I noticed something strange. David wasn't surprised. In fact, he seemed completely unbothered by the fact that his friend was standing in my room in the middle of the night. He walked in with a relaxed expression, as if this was perfectly normal. David sat down on the other side of the bed, and my confusion deepened. Why wasn't he questioning Emika? Why wasn't he asking why his friend was in my room? My heart raced as I looked between the two of them, feeling more lost and anxious by the second. What's going on? I whispered, my voice trembling. But neither of them answered immediately. Instead, they exchanged a glance that made my blood run cold. David broke the silence, speaking in a calm, almost eerie voice. I think we all know, he said, as if the answer was obvious. My mind raced, trying to understand what he meant. The tension in the room grew heavier, and I felt trapped, like I was missing something important. David looked at me with a serious expression, one I had never seen before. We've always kept this a secret, he continued. But the truth is, my friends and I admire you. His words hit me like a punch to the gut. Admire me. My stepson and his friends. I felt a mix of disbelief, 
confusion and shock. David's tone was so calm, so measured, that it made the situation even more surreal. Emika nodded in agreement, and I suddenly felt like I was in the middle of something I didn't understand, a secret that had been kept from me. David's words echoed in my mind as he continued to speak, revealing more about the feelings he and his friends had kept hidden. We've talked about it a lot, he said, his voice unervingly steady. Tonight, we finally got the courage to tell you. My heart pounded in my chest as I tried to comprehend what he was saying. They admired me, felt something for me. Emika stepped closer, his calm demeanor matching David's, and added, It's hard to explain, but when we're around you we feel something. I stared at them in disbelief, trying to understand what was happening. This wasn't the David I knew. He had always been carefree and easygoing, never giving any indication of these feelings. Now, everything felt twisted like I was in a dream I couldn't wake from. I wanted to ask questions, but my voice felt trapped in my throat. Before I could process what was happening, both David and Emika began to undress. My breath caught in my throat as they casually removed their clothes, standing naked before me as if it was the most normal thing in the world. My heart raced, and I felt a mix of shock, confusion, and fear. We have nothing to hide from you, David said calmly, his voice unshaken. I was frozen, unable to comprehend what was happening. This was my stepson, this was Emika. Why were they doing this? My mind screamed for me to tell them to stop, to leave, but I couldn't speak. They stood there, waiting for me to say something, but all I could do was stare in disbelief. The air in the room felt thick with tension, and I could feel my heart pounding in my ears. I had no idea what to do. The silence in the room was deafening as I tried to wrap my mind around what was happening. Emika stepped forward, his expression soft but serious. We admire you, he said, repeating the words that still didn't make sense to me. David nodded, adding, We thought you should know how we feel. My mind raced with a thousand thoughts, but one thing was clear. I needed to make a choice. They had crossed a line, and now they were waiting for my reaction. Despite the confusion and the strange mix of emotions swirling inside me, I knew what I had to do. I can't, I said, finally finding my voice. I don't want this. The disappointment on their faces was palpable, but I stood firm. This was wrong, and I couldn't let it go any further. Please just go. My voice was steady and I felt a sense of relief as I spoke the words. David and Emika exchanged another glance before reluctantly beginning to dress. The tension in the room slowly eased as they prepared to leave, but the strange atmosphere lingered. We just wanted to have a good time, David said, his tone filled with disappointment. I get that, I replied, trying to be gentle but firm. But this isn't what I want. They nodded in understanding, though I could see the frustration in their eyes. As they left the room, I felt a wave of relief wash over me, but the strange feeling of the night lingered in the air. I had made my choice, and though I felt a mix of emotions, relief, sadness, and confusion, I knew it was the right one. The night had taken an unexpected turn, one that I would never forget, but I had stood firm in my decision.